A couple lessons ago, we briefly covered that we can generate out a URL for a route definition using that route definition's name. Now, we actually have a lot of different ways that we can go about generating out a URL. So today we're gonna to be focusing specifically on just that. So first let's go ahead and recover what we have going on here. So from our route module, we're calling make URL and the first argument to make URL is a route identifier. Now here we're using the name of a route as the route's identifier. However, there's several other ways that we can identify a route. We can either use the route's path, or additionally, and we haven't covered this yet, but we could also use a controller reference as well. The second argument is either going to be options for the make URL call, or it's going to be route parameters for the route that we need to generate. So in this case, we have route parameters. We're specifying that the route param for ID is a value of one. If we head into Insomnia and we send this off, we're gonna get a 500 error because the route name for this route actually changed from just post show to app.post.show. So we'll give that a save, head back into Insomnia, send that off once more, and you can see that we get back slash post one. So that one is getting tacked in as the ID for our current route definition. Alternatively, instead of an object with a key value pair, we can also use an array. And the way that the array works is it will take the order of the array items and provide it in the same order as the params appear in the route definition. So in this case, since we only have one, it's going to just append the first index to the first route parameter in our route definition. So we can give this a save, send this back off, and we should get back the exact same thing. However, if we did tack on an additional route parameter, so let's do addition there, and we add on two as a second item to our array, and we send this off, we should see posts one, two, and we do. So it's just taking the order of the array and appending them into our route parameters in the same order that they appear within the route definition. So whenever our route parameters are our second argument, the third argument then becomes the options object for our make URL call. And if we actually peek the definition of make URL, we can take a look at the make URL options, which is a query string, a domain, and a prefix URL. So QS is going to allow us to add on query strings to our final URL. Domain is going to allow us to specify a particular subdomain to use whenever we're generating out the URL. And then prefix URL is going to allow us to prefix anything into the front of the final URL. So maybe we need an absolute URL instead of a relative URL. As we have here, we can prefix on the domain and the protocol for our URL within the prefix. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. So first we have query string. So we can provide an object and then any key value pair that we have provided within here is going to be converted into a query string on our final URL. So we can do test, testing query string. We can give that a save and head into insomnia, send this off. And then we're gonna get post one, two with a query string of test equals testing query string attached onto the end of that. And if we need additional query strings, we just add another key into our object. So we could do another testing, give that a save, send that off. And you can see that gets tacked on with the ampersand onto our existing query string. So we're gonna cover subdomains within its own module within the series, but uh, just to briefly cover this. So if we had subdomain routes defined, we would then be able to specify that we want this final URL to be specific to a particular domain. So for example, say we had a domain named username.jaeger.co defined, we would be able to define it like this, and then that would get taken into consideration whenever our final URL is generated. Since we don't have subdomain routes defined at all so far, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that for right now. And then finally, we have our prefix URL. Again, this is something that we can prefix onto the final URL path that is generated out. So for example, if we needed an absolute URL, we could do something like HTTP localhost 3333, give that a save, head back into Insomnia, send this off. And now we have an absolute URL that was previously a relative URL. So there's actually a whole other way that we can go about creating out a URL for a route definition apart from calling make URL. And that's by using a builder. So let's do const post URL builder equals route dot builder. And then this is a method. So we initiate the builder by calling the method. And then off of the builder, we're gonna have additional methods that we can call to then build out our URL. Now, one thing to note here is that you're gonna to want to call make or make signed last. So any additional things that you need to add, call that before it because the make is going to actually generate out the build and then initiate back a return for our final URL. So say, for example, we need to add a query string. We could do that by calling query string and then we can provide that as the argument here. So test, this is a test. And I'm actually gonna drop these down onto their own line. 
and then we could do our prefix URL as well. This time I'm just gonna tack on a path to it. We'll just tack on builder, how's about that? And then since we have a route parameter, we need to call params as well. And this accepts the exact same arguments as it does within the make URL. So we can either do an array with the order of our route parameters provided, or we can do an object with a key value pair. So let's do the object for this one since we have the array for the last one. And I actually went back and removed the route, second route parameter that we added earlier from that. So let's also edit that for our post URL generation. Okay. And then we can call make and provide the route identifier. So app.post.show. And instead of just returning back our post URL here, let's return back an object with our post URL in addition to our post URL builder. So we'll give that a save. Let's head back into Insomnia and send that off. So you can see that we're getting back post URL with our same absolute URL for that. And then we also have post URL builder, which has our builder path. So you can see builder got prefixed onto our actual route definitions path. And then our query string got tacked on to the end of our route definition path as well. And then since we covered domain briefly with the make URL, if you had a domain to reference for the builder, there's actually another builder method called builder for domain that you could take into consideration. And then the domain definition that you need to provide is just the argument for that call. So now, as you might have noticed within the IntelliSense, we also have options for making signed URLs in addition to just normal URLs as well. So signed URLs are a URL that has a hash signature appended onto it. And we can then use that hash to determine whether or not a URL has been tampered with or altered in any way. So one example of using a signed URL might be with like a password reset. So we can create a signed URL that has that hash signature on it, send it off to the user, and then we'll know via that hash whether or not that URL matches exactly what we provided the user. If it does, then we know that we're good. And then we can also check the expiry on the URL to make sure that it's still valid. Okay, so let's do const post URL signed equals route. And then there's a method called make signed URL. Now the argument set for make signed URL is the exact same as make URL. The only variance is that we have a couple of different options within our options object. So for our route identifier, let's create a new route actually for this. And we'll just do it via the path name here. So let's do test signature. Um, and then since we don't have any route parameters for this, we'll just go straight into the arguments. And then let's actually peek the make signed URL so that we can see what the options are. Take a look at make signed options. And we have query string domain and prefix URL, the same as we have for our make URL call. However, we also have expires in and purpose that we can attach onto it as well. So that's how we can go about expiring our signed URL. So we just tack on an expires in, and then here we provide either like one hour, 30 minutes, 10 minutes, 60 seconds, something of that sort. So we can do one hour to start with here. And then let's go ahead and return back our signed URL. So post URL signed, and let's create that route definition. So we'll do route.get test signature async, and then we will take request out of our HTTP context object. And request actually has a method on it called has valid signature that we can call. And then this will take the signature that's attached onto the requested URL and verify it for us. And so we'll return back a Boolean so we can wrap this in an if. And so if we have a valid signature, let's return back is valid. Otherwise we'll return back is invalid. Okay, so we have one last step here. Since we're working with hashing, we're going to want to make sure that we have our hashing library installed. So let's run npm i phc argon2. Once that's done, go ahead and start your server back up and let's jump back into Insomnia and send our request off so that we can get our signed URL. Let's go ahead and copy this, jump into our browser. We'll do HTTP localhost 3333 and then we'll paste in that signed URL. We'll hit enter and you should get back is valid because it hasn't been an hour yet. If we request it again, it's still going to be valid because we're still within an hour. If we go ahead and change this one hour, to 30 seconds, give that a save. Let's jump back into Insomnia, re-request our URL. We'll get a new hash signature for this. We can go ahead and copy it, replace our current one within our URL. We're gonna get back is valid, but let's wait 30 seconds. Let's go ahead and refresh. And now we get back is invalid because our signature has expired. So that's how you can go about creating a signed URL. Now, just like with our make URL and make signed URL, we also have a builder option for that as well. So for this, let's go ahead and create another one. It's called post URL 
builder signed equals route dot builder. And then off of here, we have the exact same options as we had before. The only difference is instead of calling make, we're going to want to call make signed. So we'll just call make signed. And then this accepts our route identifier as the first argument. So we'll do test signature. And then the second argument is the options for our signature. So in this case, let's go ahead and add in our expires in. We'll do one hour again. We can go ahead and save that. Tack on our post URL builder signed to this. Give that a save. Resend it off in Insomnia. And now you can see for this, we too get back a signature on our URL. So for the most part, now that you know the argument set for make URL, you essentially know how to make URLs for your routes anywhere. So let's go ahead and move into our views. So let's just jump into our welcome.edge. So we haven't covered anything with views yet, but just to quickly show you what you have available to you, let's go ahead and tack something in here. So we'll do a href and let's just do testing on this. So within our href here, we can actually dynamically generate out a URL to link to. So within edge, we use double curly braces. So now since we're inside of double curly braces, we now are within Adonis quote unquote. So we can call a method called route. And the first argument to route is going to be the route identifier still. So we can do app posts show. The second argument is again, just like our make URL, going to either be our route parameters or our options for our route call. So since this one has a parameter, we can do an ID of one. And then the third one that would then be any route parameters that we would want to have. So like query string, test, test, something like that. So we can give this a save. Let's jump back to our routes.ts and let's actually get rid of this return object so that we have our render back. And let's jump back into our browser. Let's refresh. Oh, right, we're on test signature. Let's go ahead and get rid of our test signature. Request this, and now you can see that we have testing here as a link. We can inspect this, and you can see that we get back an href with posts one, and our query string is attached onto it. So that's how you can go about creating routes within your views. And then the last way that we can go about creating routes within Adonis is by using redirect. So instead of just request here, let's go also go back response. And let's say maybe the signature is invalid. We want to redirect the user somewhere instead of just saying, hey, it's invalid. So we can return response, and then we can call redirect off of this. And then there's a method that we can chain off of redirect called to route. And then this to route accepts the exact same thing as make URL. So we can provide our name here, app posts, show our route parameters of one, and then any additional options that you want. So we'll just stick with query string as an easy way to test that. So we can go ahead and save this. Let's get back rid of our return there. Let's uncomment out our return here so that we have back our signed URLs. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to 10 seconds for post URL signed. We'll save this, jump back into Insomnia, get a fresh one. We can go ahead and copy this and paste this into our browser. Looks like it's still valid. Let's go ahead and wait a couple more seconds. Refresh. And now you can see that we got redirected from our signature URL to our post URL with a parameter of one and our query string attached onto it.